Uh, thank you everyone for uh, being here today, this evening, this morning for season two, session 22 of Unrehearsed Futures. Um, delighted to uh, introduce this session with uh, host Wynja Kabwe and her guest, Rusera Sital, um, discussing patterns of connection. We're very pleased that you're here. Um, we'll just uh, be recording the first 45 minutes of this conversation, after which point we'll cease recording and we can have a, um, an off the record conversation. Um, and apart from that, I'll hand it over to you, Moenya, to introduce the evening. Awesome. Great, thank you. Thanks, Amy. Welcome everybody. It's so good to see familiar faces, brand new faces. We've taken a break, so this is my first time back in a few weeks. So it's, um, yeah, it's great to be back in this space. Um, and I am in conversation with Rosera, Rosera today, who I've known for many years, and our arts circles and paths have intersected and crossed in some interesting ways in that time. Um, and I was particularly interested in being in conversation with Rosera today in this time of rupture. Um, because she is someone who has been in uh, different kinds of formations of arts organizing and arts organizations for a very long time and has, uh, whose work has uh, interfaced with a wide range of artists and a wide range of arts practices and arts organizations um, in a way that I feel like is really useful to uh, share and talk about in community as we think about um, what arts organizing can look like, what it has looked like in the past, um, what the features of it uh, are that uh, resonate and that feel like we wanna, I guess, replicate in future, more sustainable, more interesting, healthier formations. Um, so this is the territory of the conversation today. Um, and for those of you who haven't um, been here before, it is a conversation. We really, we mean it when we say that it is conversational. <laughs> so please feel free to ask questions in the chat. As Amy mentioned, the first 45, 40 or so minutes will be uh, Rosera and I in back and forth conversation. But if you have input and questions and thoughts and riffs as we go, please do mention them. The chat is always open. Um, and then we will stop recording and um, you know the floor will be, open. Um, also, just to say, uh, for those who are new, part of how Unrehearsed Futures is formed is that there are uh, four curators, Amy, myself, um, Bongeni, and Jehan, um, kind of hold these spaces. And each of us uh, is on a, a quest of sorts, has a kind of big question that we uh, have in the back of our minds when we invite particular people to come and be in conversation with. And one of mine is about thinking about how to mobilize creative arts practices in directions other than making shows. And this is for, for theater in particular, but of course we can kind of spread it out. Um, so that's a particular interest of mine. And it really kind of fits under one of the big, I, I guess, questions that I feel plagued by and inspired by, which is arts, for what, for who, why, how, you know, these like big, the big questions of why to do arts practice in the first place. So the conversation today really fits into this particular quest, this, you know, set of thoughts and thinking towards how to do it in a, in a way that feels, um, yeah, healthier, more sustainable, better in different ways. So that's that. And um, by way of introduction, um, I wanted to, you know, Sarah and I have been talking for a while about it, preparing for the conversation today. And we thought we'd do a, a kind of reflective bit and a dreaming into the future bit. And of course these things will collide. But by way of introduction, I wanted to start off um, Rosera by welcoming you to this space firstly, and um, to, ask you to um, think about of the work that you have done, the kinds of practices that you have been involved in, arts organizing 
practices that you've been involved in, what has uh, stayed with you as um, a good idea, as good practice, uh, the kind of thing that you think um, should be sustained, modeled, carried forward into a future arts organize, organization. Um, and then the inverse, what have you come across that actually rather should not be replicated? Um, yeah, that's a, as, as a way to begin to kind of uh, gently enter the conversation in a reflective way. I'm interested in your, your thoughts on that. Thank you, Moenia, and thanks for, for inviting me to Unrehearsed Futures. I have learned about it through UM's invitation, so I think this is maybe the beginning of, of longer participation here. Um, yeah, I, uh, your, your, your introduction claiming that I have all this background made me feel a, a little bit old, but maybe that's also a good, that's a good, a good moment <laughs> to, to reflect on. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm the artistic director at the National Arts Festival. I started in January 2020, so right at the point of pandemic rupture, to use your word. Before that, I, I was at Royal Visha, which is the Swiss Arts Council, the Johannesburg Regional Office, which is a European funding body that operates in uh, the Southern African region and uh, works across the Southern African region and Switzerland. And it's there for about seven or eight years. And prior to that, I was on the other side of the table as a uh, working for Chimurenga as um, a range of things, but I think towards, toward, I suppose more generally artistic director and, and uh, managing program and organization. And that was uh, also for about seven years uh, from, from 2002. And that, I mean, Chimurenga is a, is a, maybe I start there because uh, Chimurenga really felt like my, my schooling, my kind of political um, and organizational schooling in a way. Uh, I wandered into the space in my very early 20s and kind of sunk my teeth in slowly and surely. And um, Chimurenga, it's a, it's a, it's a Pan-African magazine of, of ideas and politics and art. Um, started in the backpack of Ntone Jabe, who's the, the editor and founder, kind of making it with scrap money and selling it out of his backpack. And um, uh, by 2011, we had got the Prince Award, the principal funding award. So it was, it really had quite a journey over those years. Um, and I, I think, so this is a bit of a boring point, but maybe it makes, can kind of ground why I'm here in this conversation with you. I actually really enjoyed in those early days uh, working with what was and, and kind of making order and making organization and structure and kind of figuring out what, you know, making sense of what this project was doing and how we can, you know, um, what structure we can give it, what's the best ways to, to, to make it function. And, I think that's just the kind of neurotic side of, of, of mine. But I think, you know, there's quite a few things that come to mind around Chimurenga. I suppose the one and the most clear um, and important point about Chimurenga is that it had a clear vision um, and a clear uh, direction and location and, and like political location. And this really, um, was a very important and central grounding place for the the project for everything that it that that it did or that it that it um that it tried to do, um, and this was helpful because it also helped to to navigate different situations. I think uh, another thing that was really great about Chimurenga is that of course it was a you know it was, a, it, was it worked as a um, it had strong leadership, but there were a lot of 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 um, artists, uh, writers, editors, people who were involved from, it, it, I mean, it, it had a Pan-African reach. So um, though we would kind of pursue, and you know, we would have one project and, and, and pursue that for, for as long as it took, sometimes, you know, months and months. And that, um, uh, and always with a kind of wealth of references. And I think that is really important because in a way being able to, and I mean, this was like, early 2000s right so it's it's maybe a little bit of the norm now in, in, in currently but 
but you know we would have we would have um, conversations around around projects and, and what we're doing across you know across the, with, with 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 collaborators in different parts of the world so you know your kind of uh, ideas or the things that you, that you're questioning are not you, you can go beyond the kind of confinements that let's say your particular geography or your particular background or history may may um, uh, endow, uh, and that I thought was 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 very important for the kind of uh, intellectual or 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 um, yeah the, the ideas and the work that, that we perceive that that was that was important. Um, I think it was also a very invested core group of people, like invested is in it was there it was life and work, which which is which is which is good in one way i mean i was also like you know i didn't have a child at that point so i kind of spent hours and hours in the office but it's good in, in in that you you know you have people who are bringing their everything to it but it also can be something that um has that one must kind of keep check on because of course with these with these uh situations where you give so much it can you know one has to kind of just be aware of, of how much one can give um i think the, and maybe a smaller point there was a the, the, the space itself so where we work uh, and this idea developed as years um, passed and i think now specifically the chimurenga office space is very it's a kind of mutable and multifunctional space which was which was exciting and dynamic and you know we so like you know desks on wheels and this kind of thing and you know it's an office space and it's a place to have live music and it's a space for for um all kinds of things you know i mean now they have a small, small printing press in the office and so that th these are i mean there's lots of things but th those are some of the key things um i think uh I, I mean this maybe should have been the foregrounding point but chimaranga did some amazing projects <laughs> and that was a really fantastic experience in you know and and, and huge satisfaction and um last thing on chimaranga i think what because sometimes so much so many of the projects birthed from this vision that there wasn't necessarily a way of how to do it so a lot of, of the making was really about carving out a way that didn't exist and it was it was it, this is a kind of mode of practice that i think i really learned at chimoringa um and i've got kind of little stories about range of stuff from chimoringa library to actually publishing to the chronic but but uh, there was, you know, you, you hitting, coming across, coming up against something that prevented you from doing something was not, it was just par for the course. You found a way around it or you found a way through it. So that was, that was uh, not always easy, but, but very important. And I liked about um, Shimoranga. Uh, so I was there, there, should I just carry on to Prohibition? We just Go for it. Up? Yeah, absolutely. You can just jump in whenever you, whenever you. Cool, I will. But yeah, moving to Provisha was was also meant moving to Johannesburg from Cape Town, and it was. Um, I mean, there were some very basic things that were great, like steady salary and a budget so that you could plan for three years, and you know these kind of um, uh, and a travel budget that was very exciting um, because travel on the continent is 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 not simple and it's uh, it's costly. So that was that that was I think of you know the, the cream on the top. But um, Prohibition was interesting because it was it was also a very small organization, but we did a lot of things. Um, we had a very small and tight program team, worked very well together. That was also that was also um, I guess I, I guess I keep referring to that because I think it's been quite important over the years and it's maybe something I seek and that I think is, is really important is just uh, relationships and relationship building so within a team but also with people who you work with that really human relations are so much I think the basis of of, of, of much work and and being able to to do work <laughs> and to dream together but the Provisha um had kind of two pots of money one was one was was geared towards a uh, Swiss southern African exchange and that means a range of things and another Part of funds came from the Swiss Agency for Cooperation and Development, the SBC, and this was uh, my favorite part of the of the program. So this was a fund that went to uh, Southern African uh, artists, so kind of 16 countries across the SADC region, and it was 
it was it uh, it was for mobility exchange research development organizational support um and and it it ran for 12 years so it had it had been going for for a few years by the time i joined and actually now is the last year it's it's uh, it's very sad funds have been pulled and and this phenomenal project uh will now stop or transform in some way but that was I mean, I started. I started in, at the end of 2013 with with Joseph Gaylard, and we and and it was an opportunity to kind of revise that that program, and so that was very interesting because I think possibly without without like necessarily thinking it through in great detail, uh, because or maybe just now in 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 modes of reflection, I I, I think about it more more deeply. But there was an interest in kind of supporting in constructing uh micro grants and organizational funding in such a way that uh the impact would be that of network building um and so there was a range of grants that were from very small grants to that went that went for for, for mobility or research and development and small like three thousand to four thousand dollars um and you know without needing an outcome without needing something produced to funds for for actual movement or, or production and then three-year funding for for some organizations in different parts of SADAC and and over the years so I was there for 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 seven years it was really interesting to see you know you you would you could see the kind of progression and tra trajectory mm -hmm. of of either projects or artists as someone say went to uh to 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 a different city for a um for on a research and development grant kind of met some people and a year or two later you know you see how that project grew how that relationship grew and so this really the, this development of, of works of ideas of, 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 of relationships and that I mean I think that that's I, I mean I continue to do quite a bit of reflection about that and um, and that really was the most exciting part of, <laughs> of of Prohibition, there was, I mean, we had a lot of, of, of leeway, I suppose, for a European cultural agency, there was a lot of programmatic leeway. Um, and so that that was that was great, because, um, and I suppose interesting to say for, and I'm not sure how it is in other parts of the world, but in South Africa, it's, you know, the, the Swiss, um, Swiss Arts Council uh, employed locals to run their, their offices, as opposed to bringing in people from from the country which and gives them a uh, programmatic space and, and budget so that's that that was that was great the other thing that was that was very interesting at, at, at prohibition is a, a, an important part of their program was was residencies and residencies um were a, again a format which uh there was understood as to, to, to some degree mutable and i think you know if we understand residents, they kind of come out of the visual art space, this kind of like white cube, pop in, make work after a few weeks or months, pop out and show it. And then that and that model kind of just in a way got transposed to the performing arts. So so at least I mean, my I oversaw the, the performing arts program um, at Provisha. And so this th these immediate questions kind of came up where do we have residencies and how and with who and you know what what is the point and what is the duration and so that and there was space to to really renegotiate the idea of the residency and 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 you know all the components of of, of, of what and why um and that also over the years some very interesting kind of uh trials and and and, and outcomes um so that that was that was great um I suppose, I mean, now at NAF, you know, I, I so I haven't actually had the chance to 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 uh, be part of a live festival yet. I've <laughs> done two years there. Um, various, uh, uh, we put together a festival in 2020 and in 2021, various um, approaches, largely working with online platforms and, and kind of digital and video um, tools and technologies. Uh, I think, you know, so National Arts Festival is 48 years old. It's it's a it's a, it's an institution in South Africa. It's kind of modeled on the Edinburgh uh, Festival in that there's 
there's it has various components a main festival and fridge and jazz and a range of things and so it's 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 this kind of huge festival so you know the kind of thing that you just not gonna you know make happen in <laughs> during a pandemic so but also when you have an institution that I think and it's 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 quite big and it's been around for some time it makes change or shifting um, or responsiveness quite difficult and in a way um, you know, with not without acknowledging the devastation of the pandemic, in a way, it was almost a good thing for the National Arts Festival because it forced change. It really forced um, it forced things to collapse. It forced things to break. It forced us to have to reconsider. Um, and now, with the with the current situation in South Africa, and and the, you know, we always had a situation of of of, of precariousness for artists and and within the sector these things are are, are heightened and e even a festival like the national arts festival has big questions around funding and you know it's its own sustainability and so really having to ask very fundamental questions and this i think is so it's an interesting moment it's not an easy moment that's for sure but it's an interesting moment for the festival um i think i i'm I'm so I have yet to experience this, but I, I'm I'm drawn to, but though with quite, with quite a bit of fear and trepidation, this idea of this kind of city immersed festival where you're playing like a host and you know. But I think a lot of the things that I that like residency format, relationship building, working in networks, all these things I'm interested in seeing how they can be in conversation with something like the National Arts Festival. Um, but we'll see, you know, slow processes. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Um, oh, there's lots that you said that I want to um, pick out. The, what you said at the beginning about um, Chimurenga being uh, your where you got your kind of political arts organizing schooling, I found really interesting. Even just that choice of words, um, because part of what I, you know, as um, a kind of educator maker person. Um, a question that I'm really asking more and more, as many of us are, is uh, what to teach, how to teach, why to teach, and you know, to to, to what ends, you know, what kind of um, arts industry are we training students for? You know, if, to, for yeah. them to be capacitated to do what exactly? So I was I was really curious about that the use of that term, um, schooling, and you know it's just it's kind of sparked something in my mind about um, the the kinds of things that are embedded in creative arts, uh, at least theatre and performance training. Um, that as you say, similarly, you know, when you're talking about the National Arts Festival being um, uh, uh, have been around for forty eight years and um, not so hot on the responsiveness game. Um, you know, I feel similarly about a place like UCT. And it's interesting to, to, to be in, in places like that now, which are very resourced, have uh, um, in, incredible uh, people um, involved in these uh, structures and entities. And yet, um, you know, the structural stuff is so difficult to shift and it feels like this is precisely the moment when it is the structural, it is the questions around structure that feel most um, uh, important to, to ask and to figure out how to destabilize and reorganize. Um, I also, I really like, you know, what you're saying about Chimurenga as carving out a way as a mode of practice that that is the, the way of doing the thing is to carve out the way. And it, um, I, wonder, I wonder how Chimurenga works now, you know, and if carving out a way is still embedded in their mode of practice, or if it's the kind of feature of something that is earlier in its life, you know? Mm. And if so, I wonder if it's the kind of feature that can be sustained. You know, I'd be curious to know what other people's thoughts are on this. Um, but I, as a kind of um, as a, a way to articulate um, how uh, an arts organization works, I really like that. It's like it's really stuck with me. But mm. the thing that it is doing is carving out a way. I feel like it then remains permanently in practice. You know, it's really a way of um, 
remaining in the practice of practicing as opposed to the practice of making of like making a thing or a product or an end goal or a you know all of the ways that our institutions and organizations drive towards making something that is product based you know whatever that is a graduate with these skills a production a you know whatever um so yeah i like i really like that um the so so you so you started yeah should I jump in? I just want to say something. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think that's an interesting question about about. Uh, I hadn't th thought so deeply about that, but this thing about carving out a way as a mode of practice, and uh, I mean, I think it's it's a bit of a it's a surprise to see this a kind of independent arts organization that you know fund fundraises as it goes. You know, there's no kind of government support or this kind of thing carry on for so long so since 2002. And I think that um, it is quite interesting to look at Chimorenga over the years. And I think certainly in the in those first years, there was a lot of, you know, the new new projects were also new formats and new, you know, like Chimorenga Library came off as one project. And this was kind of uh, taking over a public library and doing various interventions and engagements you know, in, in that space with what is in that space with with the publics who are there and uh, other things like Chimurangananas, these, these like mini books and, um, but yeah, a, a range of different, uh, I guess, formats or well, projects that were invented that now Chimuranga is, is, is doing a lot of kind of circulating those formats and kind of, you know, revisiting those formula formats in different contexts. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting question around um, maybe the kind of phases of, of, of an organization and, 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 and what it must do. I don't know, it's just a statement. I don't have a kind of answer, something to reflect on, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, there's also, um, I, I can imagine that there's a, you know, if you're fundraising as you go, that there's maybe a sense of, of precarity, actually, that is both motivating, but also potentially unsustainable, you know, mm -hmm. so Chimurenga is really unique in this, in the sense, you know, in all of the ways that you're talking about, that it has really, you know, this, this, what you're describing as new product, new projects becoming new formats feels really, uh, uh, it feels like it's a, it's a function of the people around the Chimurenga table having a sense that um, the, the work of the project, the life of the project um, must live beyond its, its particular output. You know, mm -hmm. that yes, we're making a thing, but we're also modeling a thing. I mean, I wonder to what extent that was conscious. Maybe it wasn't. And it's only in reflecting that you're like, oh, that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering if carving out a way as a mode of practice can be done with, without the precarity. <laughs> Or if part of the precarity is part of the juice to like keep going, you know. Depends how old you are. Depends how old you are. No, I mean fair enough. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, fair enough. I think and it's I think true. It's I think. Something that I think is important to to state about Chimuringa, and then also you know a few other projects that I can think of that are, I can, you can say kind of artist led is is um this this model of having where you have an artist lead and this artist has their own professional career which um which which has capital and buy-in and people you know be, i mean like arts uh, the art the artists themselves get invited to do various things and gets paid for this and i know for i mean a lot of those early years of, of chimurenga was was of course there was fundraising, but there was there was largely it was uh, Ntone's personal work in his personal capacity, which fed the organization. And it was funny because he would often, you know, if if there was an invite, he, he would there was there was a I mean I, I I'm not there anymore, but uh, there was this tension between the invite is to Chimurenga, but actually the inviting party wants the artist. You know, they want the, they want the name, they want the person. And you know, I think about like uh, Fostan Linekula, uh, who. Um, is the lead choreographer and has this this project. The, well, the company studios Kabako in Kisangani and DRC, and they they also have a range of 
of, you know, they, they, they have a studio space in Kesangani and various projects in, 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 in other parts of Congo. And, but it's, this, it's, it's a similar kind of model where there is, there is the artist lead, you know, and this is, and, and I mean, these invites, this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about kind of being invited to, whether it's theaters or museums in Europe, you know, this where, where you have kind of significant fees that when you bring back to a context like South Africa or elsewhere on the continent, you can do a lot more with those kind of funds. So I think that it's, it's important to, to acknowledge that, you know, um, as much as one, as much as one, well, I was going to say as much as one try thinks about making organization, there's still the individual. But I think these are the kind of questions that, it, we, you know, there's also some interesting examples of where you have, where you have organization without a kind of structure or without, you know, where it's like a collective of people. Um, for example, uh, I think it's Art Tokyo Commons, which is a, which is a, it's a, it's a, a collective of, of directors. So they call themselves and they kind of, they come together on various projects, uh, but there isn't not like a, a home or a structure. What, what, what holds them together is, the, is, is there is a kind of manifesto or principles and, um, and together kind of uh, advocating for shared principles and, and, and social models for a new future. This is, this is their, their line, but, but they, they, you know, they, they, they exist or rather, you know, they have this public identity as as individual art directors in their own in their own specialities. But whenever there's a project, they come together um, and 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 combine that. So, yeah, I, I, it's, there's many different approaches I think to look at. There's you started to talk about um, uh, about network building and kind of the maybe this is the space that you're thinking into. Um, based on the, the work that you've done. And um, I wanted to ask you to talk a little bit more about what you are, you know, I, I guess if you kind of close your eyes and cast your like, mind and heart and insight into the future, <laughs> um, I'm wondering what, what floats into view in terms of, um, and, and I'm thinking particularly about this notion of the network that I know you're like in the middle of thinking through applying. Um, but what shapes what what shapes come into view, and what particular features of um, I don't know if it's a single entity or a range of entities start to are starting to like come together a little bit in your in your mind, you know, based on your past experience and based on what you are thinking forward into. That's a big question. I mean, I think so. Yes, coming out of out of Chimranga, and then going into Provisha on the other side of the table, like I was saying, and really working with organizations like Chimoringa then, um, of, of kinds of all kinds of organizations, and having that delicious travel budget. I think what what really what I began to to pay a lot of attention to and be very interested in was particularly these kind of artist-led spaces, whether they're kind of actual physical spaces that. Um, uh, that are created very specifically within a context or within a community, um, or whether it's a festival that has a kind of momentary uh, manifestation and then and then disappears. And I think, and so this is particularly on the continents. And this for me um, was, yeah, and, and then combined with with this kind of really paying attention to 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 the residency format or the idea of the residency. I mean, these are things that I that I really spent a lot of time with um, over like the last I don't know ten years. And and in a lot of these travels, there's uh, I, this is a kind of common approach almost this 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 artist led entity. And I think what what is very interesting for me about about these spaces. So largely they'd be independent spaces. They would be run by, have a kind of artistic person who is, who's carrying a vision and who is, is, is leading. And, um, and, and often, you know, off the back of their own earnings as an individual artist. So an interest in kind of setting up a space for a range of things, usually, you know, a kind of meeting, uh, dialogue, 
creation of work, presentation of work. But what becomes very interesting, I think, with these kind of organizations is that, you know, when you're considering, you know, sorry, and then just to say, you know, often I suppose the drive to set up this kind of organization is 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 important because if you understand uh, on the continent, and of course there's it's it's a, it's a huge and diverse you know a, a continent, so um, that's a, that's a this is a it's a bit of a brash generalization, but generally you know there's not there's not really a lot of support for the arts. I think South Africa probably has has the most in terms of public and private private supports, but Generally, you know, you, 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 you even have a situation where you even are working in contexts where the role or the relevance of the artists themselves is in question, you know. And so there's really um, kind of wide open ground to set up something. And, and, and so I need to see um, spaces where artists are really kind of starting from scratch in a way and setting up spaces for, for them to produce to, to really produce their own work but then of course they're not working in isolation and spaces which are set up are set up within you know of course within a context and I think you know because largely we're talking about context where there's maybe more precarity there's less resources you you have less um, infrastructure in terms of like art sector infrastructure but also sometimes basic infrastructure there is so much that one has to has to has to set up in order to kind of set up space, you know. And in the in the in setting up these structures, there's a like negotiation um, and relationship building that this artist and who they're working with have to um, have to have to consider and have to do in so many layers of so many sectors of society, you know, whether it's like within a particular split place, a, a, a kind of community or religious leader or a, a you know, or, 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 or other artists or, you know, municipality issues or, or whatever. And so I find in these kinds of artist led independent entities, right, you have the artist who is actually kind of accumulates quite a bit of cultural capital and then is in a really very quite interesting and important position of 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 kind of being between a very like a very specific locality and global dialogue and this for me is 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 super interesting and really like very important points for 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 a range of things you know whether it's dialogue whether it's whether it's whether it's creating work and then often, you know, these kind of spaces are also functioning on, on different levels. They're also providing electricity, education, clean water, or place to meet, showing work. And um, so this, this, you know, I think I've taken a strong interest in, 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 in artists at independent spaces and the formats and the, and the modes of, 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 of kind of creating and surviving that they've taken. I mean, I think that connects to network in that in, in creating one of these spaces. So for example, Studios Kabaku is this kind of kind of space. Um, uh, there's a there's the, a festival, um, Far, Farafani Wati in, in, in Bamako. I'm not sure what the state of the festival is now um, in the last two years, but also, um, you know, they kind of emerge across January and February and are, and are located within a particular part of the city and artists come in, they re international artists, three international artists, regional artists come, and West African regional artists. It's a lot of engagement, there's new work, there's engagement with, 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 with community, young people who are all around. And, you know, so I, I, invariably, these organizations are key points or hubs within a network. And when they are connected to each other, you have this very, um, I think, very important perspective to, to pay more attention to this kind of this like this network of 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 artists uh a, a network of art making and art making particularly in this context it's more than you know it's not we're it's what you were saying when it's not it, it's so much more than a kind of final piece that one is presenting you know it's it's art as as knowledge fields and art as a kind of vehicle for social dialogue and and, and a range of things so yeah I'm, yeah. <laughs>
Awesome. Um, I, I want to um, pull out a few things, but I've been, well, not but anything. We've got two minutes left until the formal recording time uh, is over. Um, and I want to really invite everyone in the room to, um, to ask your questions. And I'm curious to know what's on your minds. I'm also really curious to know um, what some of this looks like in different contexts. You know, I, I know that we've got people in the room from all over the world, in fact. Um, so I'd be curious to know, you know, what, what is on your radars um, at the moment for, um, in terms of like particularly interesting formations that are emerging out of this time. Uh, in, you know, particularly interesting ways that artists are organizing themselves that um, pre-COVID, let's say, arts organizations are having to shift and mold or collapse and re-find themselves. Um, so, so while you're thinking about that, I am, I'm really taken by this notion, you know, like when you say it, it seems, it's like, well, yeah, of course, arts, arts organizations in contexts like, like uh, ours here on the continent are these, um, key points or hubs, as you call them, they do, you know, they become like a point at which a whole range of things can circulate, right? As you say, people can gather, they can meet, they, it's a chance, it's an opportunity for people to show work, but that piece is one in amongst a whole range of other functions that this, whatever it is, place, entity, structure, is able to facilitate. And um, what I'm, interested in, in uh, what I want to ask, I, I guess, is what, how in your thinking about these like nodes within networks, something like funding can operate, right? Is it an awesome an opportunity to rethink how resources um, can move? Um, I'm curious about, yeah, I guess that's the question, you know, it's a kind of, so, Yes, the network. There's so much about that idea that really makes makes sense. Um, that is in place already, and that makes sense to potentially um, mobilize more. Uh, but I wonder how does the how does the money move? You know, <laughs> is it money? Is it something else? Are the resources understood differently? Um, and if so, how and are they? You know, is there is there opportunity for them to be kind of shared? And uh, yeah, I'm wondering about the kind of resourcing piece. I mean, I think it, that's a really important question because, you know, I think how we how we engage with funding organizations or how funding organizations kind of, again, generalization, but there's a sense of where a, an artist is funded or a work, you know, producing a work is funded or an organization is funded. Whereas if we understand that we actually have this kind of organic network of 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 the arts and their influence and we kind of shift to think okay how do we fund the network we can then start to think about different ways of of how one could fund and i mean a lot of this thinking comes from 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 the sdc work at at Provisha. and a lot of it um like you know uh, retrospectively kind of seeing uh or over the over the years, seeing seeing things grow, seeing relationships grow, seeing and I mean I think if we kind of if we understand that so like if we if we understand let's say an art network as a complex system, you know it's a complex and dynamic system, then then we can we can think that you know with influence and and with kind of cause effect. Uh, 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 across organizations because you know artists work in different projects work in different you know with in different uh, personal networks uh, so if we understand if, if we approach from that perspective then maybe we we can there's there's the sense that okay a small a small change or a small injection of funding somewhere here can have a a, a, a bigger I loathe to use the word impact, but you know, the, the kind of, <laughs> well, let's just use it. A, a, let's say a, a, a smaller injection of whether it's funds or whether it's internet access or resource or whatever it is, has, 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 has a, well, there's a word for it. It's a kind of, you know, compounding uh, or extended 
impact when you're understanding that you're funding a network. And similarly, a change. So a kind of, you know, a closure of, of, of independent theater, like we saw at Kew Garden in Cape Town, will also have a, a network effect of artists who used to rehearse there, uh, mm -hmm. festivals who used to be hosted there. And so, the, the thing is, if we if we start to think about funding funding a network, so kind of small, considered, it doesn't have to be small, but even if it is just small, kind of considered injections of funds or resources within what we understand as a network, then these larger effect, effects we are observed across the system rather than kind of you know one artist who produces one work and then you kind of tick a box. Of course, that happens as well. But um, so yeah, I think I think there's 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 work to be done about kind of understanding our arts, the networks that exist because they do exist, you know, um, and thinking about how how we can. I mean, there's 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 a field of study, network science, which looks at networks in 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 in, in range of different um, areas, from neuroscience to um uh economic systems biochemistry and it's you know it's a relatively new field of study um kind of emerging in 1998 by uh, this mathematician barabasi and some of his colleagues but you know developing the tools to understand uh, and make sense of complex network systems and i think that some of these kind of logics or these approaches if we, can be applied to 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 some of the networks that already exist we have to first recognize that they exist then we can possibly look at whether it's a, a kind of simulation approach or whether it's, um, you know, to, to, to make, to, to, to have a considered sense of what can, if we, if we put a little bit of funds here, what could be the results if we do, if we kind of, you know, and whatever, a, a range of different kind of uh, uh, ways to fund a network. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. So interesting. I feel like there's there's something about um, really rethinking the funding piece in particular. You know, that really un just like shedding shedding <laughs> some of the baggage around how arts practice gets funded and reimagining um, a new possibility that is much uh, that is uh, shared in these ways feels like a real a key to. Um, really being able to do things differently, you know, really being able to um, function in a, you know, in a much more sustainable way. Um, I want to, what do I want to do? It's past 45 minutes. So officially the recording is going to stop. You'll hear it now. Our series.